After last week's episode about counters to top tier Pokemon, I asked which Pokemon you wanted to learn more about counters for. By far, the most requested was Snorlax. Well, unfortunately, Snorlax has no counters. It's already dark out because I spent most of my day doing math, so this episode is coming to you from right here at my desk. The focus of this episode is on improving Pokemon Go, but there are still lessons to be learned that can improve your gameplay and enhance your understanding of the game. The fact that Snorlax has no counters doesn't mean you can't beat Snorlax, it just means there's no one Pokemon who excels at doing it. While Dragonite has some good counters in ice types like Dugong and Cloyster, your best bet against Snorlax is to just use your strongest Pokemon. This isn't necessarily a huge problem on its own, but it adds to the issue of a very small group of Pokemon dominating the entire gym metagame. Dragonite, Vaporeon, and Exeggutor can all be beaten by Pokemon outside of the top tier group, which gives you a little bit of opportunity to use those weaker Pokemon who are buried deep in your storage box. Snorlax, on the other hand, just makes the game more stale. but it's not actually his fault. So let's talk about why Snorlax has no counters. There are actually a few reasons, and I'll go over each of them briefly for now, but I'll probably expand on all of these in future videos. I'm gonna start by just listing them all out because they all kind of interact with each other. So the reasons that Snorlax has no counters are type advantage, the damage formula, move inequality, and poor distribution of moves among Pokemon. Type advantage in Pokemon Go is extremely underpowered. Super effective attacks deal 25% bonus damage, but because of the way the damage formula works, in practice, it's actually less than that. Attacks with low base power, like Water Gun and Bite, sometimes don't even deal extra damage with type advantage because of the way the damage formula rounds down. And even when the criteria are right for them to deal extra damage, it's usually only 20% and not 25, again, because of the rounding. The bonus gets closer to 25% as the base power of the move increases, but even at 100 power, it's still not quite 25. Pokemon types are intended to create a rock-paper-scissors type system, where each type has advantages over others. In the main series games, super effective moves deal two times their normal damage, and this bonus is big enough that it's almost always better to use a lower-powered, super effective move than a neutral move with slightly higher power. A double damage bonus means a super effective move can deal as much damage as a neutral move with nearly twice its power. In Pokemon Go, a super effective move has to have at least 80% of the power of a neutral move to deal comparable damage. Since we talk about damage in Pokemon Go in terms of damage per second, or DPS, consider this. The strongest quick move in Pokemon Go deals 1.7 times the DPS of the weakest quick move, so Fury Cutter will never match the DPS of Pound, even with Stab and Type Advantage. Charge moves are even worse, where the strongest charge move has over four times the DPS of the weakest. You might argue that there are moves in the main series Pokemon games with very low power compared to the strongest moves, but there's actually a need for that. In the main series games, Pokemon learn weaker moves at lower levels. It's just part of the game's progression. In competitive play, only the strongest moves get used. In Pokemon Go, there is no progression. A Pokemon is caught or evolved with its final moves, and they never change. Without going too far off on a tangent, what I'm trying to say here is that addressing the inequality and questionable distribution of moves in Pokemon Go could go a long way towards balancing and diversifying the metagame. Not every move has to have equal power, but they should all have a purpose. When Bug Bite is strictly better than Fury Cutter in almost every way, there's almost no reason for Fury Cutter to even exist, but that's something we'll explore further in another video. As it applies to Snorlax, here's the issue. Snorlax is a normal type Pokemon with one weakness, fighting. Machamp is the strongest fighting type Pokemon in the game right now, and a lot of people suggested him as a counter. While he's certainly capable, there are still Pokemon who beat Snorlax faster and more efficiently. Machamp's best charge move against Snorlax, Cross Chop, has the highest DPS of any charge move, but his fighting type quick move, Karate Chop, is tied for the lowest. Karate Chop is the weakest fighting type quick move in the game, and I can't think of a single good reason why it was given to Machamp. One reason you'd want to give a Pokemon a weaker move is to keep its power in check, but Machamp would still be far from overpowered even with a better move like Rock Smash. 
So this is what I mean by poor distribution of moves. Machamp could have been a much better Pokemon if it had just been given better moves. Now let's start talking about numbers. For all these calculations, I assumed that the Pokemon were max level, but the numbers should come out the same at any level as long as both Pokemon are the same level. Looking strictly at damage, with Karate Chop and Cross Chop, Machamp beats Snorlax in 49.6 seconds. That's if you just spam your moves as often as possible without dodging. Vaporeon, with Water Gun and Hydro Pump, KOs Snorlax in 50.2 seconds, a difference of just over half a second. Vaporeon has a lower attack stat, and neither of its moves deal super effective damage to Snorlax, but Water Gun is just that much better than Karate Chop in terms of damage per second. Even more embarrassing for Machamp, Arcanine, with Fire Fang and Fire Blast, beats Snorlax in 45 seconds, and again, neither of those moves are super effective against Snorlax. Now when you factor dodging in, Vaporeon gets even better. Since Water Gun is faster than Karate Chop, its DPS suffers less when dodging. You can easily fit 4 or 5 Water Guns in between a defending Snorlax's Zen Headbutts, while you can only fit 2 Karate Chops in the same time frame. Again, assuming the defending Snorlax has Zen Headbutt, the ideal defensive quick move, Machamp suffers even more since it's weak to Psychic. Vaporeon takes 7 damage from each Zen Headbutt, while Machamp takes 8. And again, we only see a 14% increase in the damage because of the unforgiving rounding of the damage formula. But because Machamp has much lower HP than Vaporeon, it actually makes a big difference. It would take a Snorlax 31 Zen Headbutts to KO a Vaporeon, and just 19 to beat Machamp. So when you consider that Vaporeon and Machamp both take about the same amount of time to beat Snorlax, but Machamp loses much quicker, it's hard to call Machamp a good counter. To beat a Snorlax, there's no real counter. You really do just have to use your best Pokemon. Any top tier Pokemon will beat Snorlax more efficiently than Machamp. Even a Snorlax is better against Snorlax. Now let's compare that to Dragonite, who actually has decent counters. Making the same assumptions as before, Cloyster with Frost Breath and Blizzard beats Dragonite in 22.5 seconds. If we look at top tier Pokemon, the strongest one who deals neutral damage to Dragonite is Executor with Zen Headbutt and Psychic, and that moveset takes down Dragonite in 30.5 seconds. Other top tier Pokemon like Vaporeon and Arcanine take upwards of 35 seconds because Dragonite resists their attacks. So what's the difference here? Why does Dragonite actually have counters and Snorlax doesn't? Dragonite has a double weakness to ice, so Cloyster's moves get a 56% damage bonus, which is a more significant increase than Machamp's 25% against Snorlax. Cloyster's moves also have much better overall damage per second. Frost Breath and Blizzard combine for 14.1 DPS, while Karate Chop and Cross Chop work out to just 10.5. And this perfectly illustrates a couple of issues with Pokemon Go. Type advantage is severely underpowered. It's not until a Pokemon gets at least a 50% bonus to their damage that we start seeing any kind of real advantage. And the solution to this is simple. Increase the bonus damage for using a super effective attack. Bring real type advantage to Pokemon Go. Beyond that, the unforgiving rounding of the damage formula also needs to be fixed. There are plenty of possible solutions, but I'll go into detail on that in a future episode. And after that, rebalance moves. Again. When the game launched, moves were horribly imbalanced. The first move update greatly improved that, but more work still needs to be done. Not only to increase balance between moves, but to balance the distribution of moves among Pokémon. So many Pokemon are nearly useless in Pokemon Go because their poor move options give them no real purpose. Niantic needs to put much more thought into choosing move pools if Pokemon like Kingler or Fearow are ever going to have a shot at relevance. It seems like some Pokemon had their moves carefully selected, like Snorlax's best defensive quick move being super effective against his one weakness, fighting. Whether or not that was intentional, I don't know, but every Pokemon could benefit from having that kind of forethought put into their moves. Like I said, every move should have a purpose, and every move given to a Pokemon should be chosen for a reason. So it's not entirely Snorlax's fault that he's so broken, although his massive HP doesn't help, but that's another topic for the future. There are so many factors contributing to Snorlax's power, and addressing them could help bring a little more diversity and balance to Pokemon Go. 
That's going to be it for this one. I know it was a little dense, but I hope it helps to further your understanding of Pokemon Go. I'll see you guys tomorrow. When you're in range of a wild Pokemon, Go Plus vibrates and the light flashes green, and you can press the button to throw a Pokeball. You don't get to choose what type of ball, it only throws one, one Pokeball, and you either catch it or you don't. So let's see what happens. <laughs>